All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. All right. Small but mighty crowd. How are you guys doing? Science. 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 Yes. Yes. Welcome to Eureka. My name is Kevin Whittinghill. I'm Alan Sakian. And we are hosting Eureka. Who's been here before? Sweet. Loot. Loot. Woot. Woot. Okay, I thought you wanted loot. I said, okay. Robin Hood. He, he came here for the booty. I get it. I can see your arm around here. I understand. Uh, who, who, who is here for the first time? Sweet. That's good, too. Oh, we saw, All like, right. hands. Okay. All right. Great. Well, for you first-timers, we are Eureka, an interactive science comedy show. Scientists are going to give a talk. Comedians crack jokes. And you guys win fun theme-related prizes. That's the booty we were talking about. Sweet booty. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so how it works, essentially, you know, our speaker, our guest scientist, who's the amazing... Dr. Holger Muller. Uh, ...will be asking you guys questions. Uh, and if you get the answer right, we yell out Eureka, and you win a prize. That's how the structure of the talk goes. So we're going to test that out right now. I'm going to ask you guys a question. If anyone gets it right or close enough, we'll yell out Eureka. Okay, so here we, we use the questions from the PowerPoint, right? Uh, well, this was one I just, I just, you I just, uh, yeah, I just thought and researched. So, uh, according to the uh, market research firm Global w Web Index, how many, what percentage of users on Tinder, the dating app, are already in a relationship? <laughs> Let's be honest. Wait, wait, you have 70? Are you on it? Okay. Wait, 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 seven what? 74? No, but that might be your personal experience. I don't know. 60? Well, 50 is wow. closer. That's, in, in, that's very close. 42% yell out Eureka for this guy. Eureka. Nice. If you're on Tinder, you may not find your soulmate. Uh... But you may Damn. find somebody. You might find somebody else's soulmate. That is the correct answer. <laughs> All right, you guys got it. So that's how it works. And let's take a sample question from the slides that you guys were seeing earlier as well. How about number two, which was, what percentage of an atom is empty space? All right, let's have an answer over here. Yes, yes, 99.999% of an atom right. is empty space. So that's like literally a moth inside of an empty warehouse. Let's yell out Eureka for these Eureka! guys. You got it, you nailed it. So that's, that's how it works, um, our question answers. And what about our mission? Who are we? All right, Eureka is an interactive science comedy show. We know that. But our mission is to demystify science in ways that are relatable, educational, and entertaining. Does that sound like fun? All right. All right. All right. Let's uh, get this party started, let's shall do we? It. Yes. All right. We're going to first begin by bringing out our comedians who will be joining us on stage riffing the entire time. Uh, we're going to bring out Corinda Dobbins and Joey Avery. Come on down. Corinda and Joey. <laughs> Round of applause. You can sit here. All right. What, what do you want? Man? You can be right there. Yeah, at that seat. But I, you can also touch my hand. Just put me in the <laughs> <corner. Yeah. laughs> I like, you're actually, I felt you were reaching for something else. Yeah, you're, you're nice. Uh, you're thick. I'm yeah. Uh, All right. What, for, uh, 42%? Did you hear that fact? I did, yeah. Yeah, now that's something we can relate to. Can you relate to like dark matter and, and gravity and, and physics? Do you guys know much about that? <laughs> I, 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 I think I, what is he, I, think I do know about dark matter. <laughs> 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 All right. Being black in the universe. I think. Um, <laughs> You're at a point. Where did you, you know? guys get that photo of me? <laughs> that we we found that um, on uh, I think what we call it your Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I could have sent you a good photo if you I wanted it. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah thanks yeah. for keeping <laughs> my hair in the car. <laughs> yeah, I really that appreciate one. that. Yeah. I think you guys look great. You're part of like this nucleus and all that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, did you guys have any before we begin? Any like uh, you both active? Any shows? Anything you want to shout out? Anything you're doing? Uh, any comedy shows? Uh, yeah. Every Wednesday, not far from here, uh, at Hyden Turk, I do a show at the Ales Unlimited Beer Basement, so come by, check that out. Uh, I do a political comedy show at the New Parkway Theater called The Resistance. Um, 
every two months. So in June, we'll be having our next one. So you guys need to check that out as well. Is that awesome. a right wing show? Yes. Um, it's so right wing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. <it was. laughs> The most. Yeah, yeah. Rush, <laughs> Rush Limbaugh does like a 30 uh -huh. minute set. Is that actually, 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 the Putin is like, he truth. does like a hot five up top. It's a hot time. five. I think anything he does is naturally hot <laughs> and only lasts five minutes. I don't think he can go any further. His body is so overrated, it makes me sick. Okay? Yeah, as, long, like, oh, as long as he so does strong. an annex, no, it's not. fine. He's yeah. not yeah. strong. All right, are we ready for some science? Yes, yeah. we are. All right. This is going to be awesome. This is all right. All right. And our guest scientist for the evening. Dr. Holger Muller, come on out. Yes. Hello. Yeah. All right. Hi what, there. what an accomplished physicist. Yes, come on in, take a seat. <laughs> um, so this is incredible. I want to know more about this, but he applied for his first patent when he was 14. You had nothing better wow. to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, yeah, applying for patents when you're 14. Uh, graduated from Humboldt University, Berlin, received fellowship of Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, and joined the group of Stephen Chu in Stanford as a postdoc. And in July 2008, he joined the physics faculty at UC Berkeley to push the sensitivity of instruments to new levels and perform precision measurements of fundamental physics. So, we are very excited for you. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I can't see you. Uh, maybe now. Yeah. Okay, there's quite some of That's you. That's yeah. <laughs> it. Hi. The, they're not even dressed for the show. So I, I, oh, okay. I, it's better in the dark, I don't know. So, tell, can you tell us a little bit about the patent? That's interesting. The patent. Before we start, yeah. <laughs> What's well, about TV? So, you know, these days every TV is huge, right? And in those days, TV images, if you're as old as me, you remember, they were kind of flickering and they were not all that good, right? And then the new thing was high-definition TV, which nowadays is no longer news, and I thought it would be really bad if people had to throw away their old TV. And so I, I thought, is there a way to split the high-definition signal in two signals so that each one gives a normal resolution image, and the combination would give a high-resolution image so that if you have an old TV, you can receive that, and if you have a new TV, you can get the better image. Um, Did you patent that successfully? I already I thought of that, by the way, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did patent that, so I, I wrote it up in fake legalese because I didn't have money for an attorney, right? And the guy at the patent office saw my date of birth and thought, oh, I need to see if this is fake. Is it a fake patent, right? And so he called me up at home and had me explain everything to him. He thought maybe I was straw man for a big company that wanted to smuggle their th stuff through. So. And then he wrote it up in real legalese, and there's the patent. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. Um, I discovered weed when I was 14. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> different, different Humboldt. But, you know. Does <laughs> So same, same thing, yeah. W was your life in high definition at that point? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was all when I was 14 or 15, and then I met, that was in Germany, right? And then I met a guy whose name was Scott Ballard, and he was from San Francisco, an American, and he introduced our high school class to alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The good that, kind? What's that? The good kind? What kind of alcohol did he introduce you to? Mostly beer, um, but there was also a devilish substance that was a mixture of vodka and apple juice. I bet the I bet <laughs> sounds <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> the patent application just and went so down <laughs> at that point. I think. That <laughs> and that's the reason why you talked about what I did at 14, and then you talked about what I did much, much later. So yeah. <laughs> 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 These <laughs> mysterious <laughs> journey years. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you bring alcohol to a class of high schoolers here, they just call you a creep. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we didn't no. call each other creeps, right? <laughs> Can we Would get you? a little bit of an audience interaction? Who knows about dark matter and dark energy? Say, I. I. That, was, woo, okay. right. that, was pretty, that was pretty good. Um, all right, we'll see how much you actually yeah. know. And that's, that's beyond just the words dark and matter. Just letting you know. <laughs> Combine them as a concept. Huh? Dark energy, that kind of sounds like a yoga class in Oakland. But uh, <laughs> you, yeah. you should patent that. I think <laughs> I will. I think I will after the show. <laughs> right. All right, so let's jump into our questions. Woo. Okay. 
How old is the universe? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. There it is. All right, all right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Who got hold that on first? Second. Uh, all right, comedians, do you guys have a thought? Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, like 14.9 billion. <laughs> 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 14 <laughs> doesn't mind me. 14.9 point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go. 14.91. <laughs> do you want to be specific? Oh, we got it. All right, all right. We, we, we already got it? We, I stole where, from that we, guy. Yeah, well, we, yeah we, we got it, but it came from... Yeah, okay. All right, say that again. What was it? 14 billion. 14 uh, billion? That is exactly what I've wrote on the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got right, let's Eureka, give it Eureka, Eureka, everybody. Eureka. <laughs> yes! Forever. All right, and of course, Forever. in the universe is Earth. Forever! Oh, my. Forever. It's a long time. <laughs> Here you go, your catch. Forever! All right. Forever! <laughs> and that will loop. Forever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I, I can so watch that for a while. I could too. <laughs> All right. So, what's the significance of, of that question besides that we're a grain of salt um, in the cosmic time scale? What's the significance of the question? Yes. It tells you how old the universe is. That's Eureka. Eureka. That's a nice guy. Do I get a price? <laughs> But, but, but that's like in, 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 in you, what if like the universe like applied facial cream? Could it look less old than it actually is? Because I do that every night. Could we get like a wrinkle-free cream? Yeah. For Very Earth? interesting. Just, yeah. right. Maybe you could reverse the aging by applying the right kind of thing. Right? Let's yeah. put some makeup on the universe. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's my... That old. Okay, Maybe she just needs a young uh, girlfriend. Let's <laughs> make it feel young. Yeah. How, does young one, how does one even know that the universe has an age? How does one even know? Um, is that a serious question? Yes. <laughs> yes. James, okay. can we turn the light off in the audience? Yes. Thank you. A while ago, there was a guy called Edwin, I think, Hubble. Not Edwin Land of Polaroid Photography, right, but Hubble. And he found that if you look at a star, and if you look at a star that's really far away, it's probably moving away from you. Sometimes it's not quite right, and sometimes there's the odd star that's moving towards you, but most of them are moving far away. And so he concluded, if they all move away from you, that means they must have been at the same point before. Imagine kind of a globe, right? A globe that's really a balloon, and you blow it up, and then the distance from each city to each other city is increasing. And so going backwards, you can think, okay, at the given speed and distance, when were these together? And the answer to that is somewhere between 10 billion years and 20 billion years. Now, these days we have better data, and this picture has been taken by a satellite called Planck. NASA and ESA um, ran that together. That's the Americans and the Europeans, right? And they call this the baby picture of the universe. Because what happened, 14 billion years back, the universe was extremely hot. There were particles floating all around, so many of them. We're all hot when we're younger. Real hot, real hot, Sorry. right. <laughs> um. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you thinking back to it right yeah. now? <laughs> Just look at the 14 year old stud. Kevin, it's only 14. I know. <laughs> Taking his shirt off when yeah. he applies for the patent. <laughs> Now, this is the real creepiness when you talk okay. about 14 billion years old people, right, and call them hot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Try to m improve people's self-esteem. <laughs> anyway, so at some so point... So, Holger, you made the analogy of the balloon. So yeah. the balloon started without any air in it, and everything was very close, and then you blow up air into it, and slowly... Yeah, so to speak, yeah. And they called that the Big Bang, right? Anyway... Um, so, a little bit after this 14 billion years ago, maybe 14 billion years minus 100,000 years or so, all of a sudden, all these particles, electrons, protons, and so on, decided to combine to form atoms. And so, the outcome of all this cosmic dating agency is that there are no free particles anymore. And all of a sudden, the universe became transparent. You could look through it. And so all the light that was emitted at that time still exists, 
but it got diluted as the universe balloons up, right? And so this is a picture of this radiation, and it still looks like it was 14 billion years ago. So they call this the baby picture of the universe. And you see it's mostly smooth. It looks like my biopsy or something that I had. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll believe you. <laughs> this looks like something I walked past uh, when I was coming in here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is the tendon On the line. ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Was it a stray testicle? <laughs> uh, it's like an x-ray. You'd see TSA guys like, I want to quit my job. And they look at the see it's, it's, it's your testicle. Yeah. 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 So just to bring another cool, significant point about the, how old the universe is, have you guys seen Cosmos? Yes. So, well, so in Cosmos, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson who explains that if the whole length of the universe that, has, that we know has been put into a calendar, the timeline, into a calendar of one year that dinosaurs only came to existence, or the Earth only came to existence in September in that calendar year, and then dinosaurs only came into existence on December 25th, and then dis dinosaurs were extinct on December 30th, and humans only came into existence like uh, Columbus only landed in America like 1.2 seconds ago. Um, and so Doesn't feel like it, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that gives a cosmic time scale um, of how long it has taken to go from uh, f to see our stars and our planets and life on this planet. Yeah. So, um, Holger, what is Wilkinson Microwave Anistotrophy Probe, the W map? Oh. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> when you need so to make a frozen hot pocket. food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Corinne. You put it in there. Yep. Back to you. <laughs> yeah. It's a probe? Yeah. So these days we have cell phones, and so we call each other up, and so on. It's no problem at all. And all that technology was developed, much was developed during World War II and in the 40s and 50s. And so in the 50s, there were engineers at Bell Labs who built giant antennas to try to send lots of phone conversations from one place to another place, right? They were called Arno Penzias and Wilson, and they built a giant antenna, and they found it was noisy. There was always some static coming out, and so they thought maybe it's the bird poo in the antenna, so they climbed up and cleaned it up. But the static remained. And a little later, they found a paper online. You know, there's the SpaceX guy. What's he called? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. He says that 99% of all science papers are useless. Maybe he even says 100%. I would argue that 99% of all startup companies go bust. <laughs> Woo! Did you hear that, I Elon? Think, I think ultimately oh. the point is that we should just look at the Bible. And that's how we really... <laughs> Gonna figure wait, all this out. Wait, when was the Bible written? Three seconds ago? <laughs> <laughs> like 2.5. Is I that think. the one you trusted? No, I, I think we gotta teach the controversy. Uh, yeah. Seriously. We should, yeah, we should teach the controversy. <laughs> okay, wh wh what is WMAP? Wh all right, all right. Yeah. So, um, these guys learned that some crazy guy was working on this Big Bang theory and would predict that there's a little bit of noise left over what's plotted here. And so, Arno Penzias and Wilson, they got famous for discovering the cosmic microwave background, okay? And so people want to in investigate that more, and WMAP, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, is one of those satellites that were designed to measure it better and that produced this map. It was led by a very nice guy at Princeton, Lyman Page. Let's give some applause to Lyman Page. Okay. <laughs> what did he... Yeah, Lyman. Did he give you a back rub? Why is he such a nice guy? What, what's the back st story here? <laughs> no, you know, in physics, we have more sociopaths than in other fields. Okay. <laughs> this is what he just gets... In. Whoa, a yeah. different yeah. show. Right. You'd love comedy as well. Lyman, <laughs> Lyman Page is not one of them. So okay, we that's good. Give credit where it's due. Wow. Yeah. I, feel, I feel you have like a list at home of these people you want to crush because they've. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'll never do physics with these people. <laughs> right. I'm, spl I'm splitting my atom with them. It's a short list, though. It's a short list, don't I? Yeah. Name names. <laughs> <laughs> he will Trump. blast them on Twitter for you. <laughs> He's not a physicist. <laughs> Who would you say? Exactly. Who? Donald Trump. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Renowned scientist. <laughs> Renowned scientist, yeah. All right. Let's move on to our next question. Okay. Yes. Holger, yes, go ahead and read. So there's just a, yeah, how much of the universe is normal visible matter? By that I mean the stuff like this or like this, right? Com comedians? Oh. Okay, somebody said. They are. Wait, 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 hold on. 4%. Let's get some opinions. Uh, more answers? Eureka! Okay. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, it's a Oh, they're yeah. nailing it, Eureka. Jesus. Eureka! Yeah! Eureka. Did he cheat 4%? Wait, how, how did you know the... Is there the a study guide for this shit? I <laughs> know. Uh, how did you know? All right. I'm a big Richard Pryor fan. <laughs> Does this... All right, All right what's, our, what's our prize? Let's do... I got a, I got a fun one. <laughs> this one here... Uh, oh, I... I don't, okay, I think it'll work for you. Let's open it up, take a peek. What is it? Look at these little... Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh look at that. that Those are beautiful. You see that? That is very nice. Little, like, nucleus That looks earring. very uh, physicist-y. Yeah. You see that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is perfect for the Folsom Street Fair, my friend. <laughs> yes. it. You only oh, wear those. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> so we have little atoms. Little atoms. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It could be a pendant. It doesn't have to be an earring. It could and be anything. There, and there's ma oh, there's many of them. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh oh. Wait, there's more. It looks like a synapse. Ooh. Ooh. I don't An know axon. what that is. It's a uh, synapse or it's a branch. It's, it's your choice. I mean. All right. Here All right. Go. Give it up for four percent, huh? Woo. Yeah. All right. Good answer. He's a four percenter. He's a four percenter. <laughs> All right. So that's the composition, right? Actually, 73% is dark energy. And this is not a question you'll get a prize for, but what does dark energy do? Actually, that'll be a question later. So okay. Yeah. 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 Right? And then there's dark matter. And together, they form the dark sector, OK? 96%. Yeah, almost everything. So then 3.6% is intergalactic gas. That's so funny. That's, <laughs> uh, there it that's is. all the hydrogen clouds that haven't bunched up to form galaxies and stars yet. And then 0.4%, that's the amount of gas that has bunched up mostly in form of stars, a little bit in form of planets. It's crazy. So we see this massive Earth and this massive star and massive Jupiter, and it's yeah. only 4%. It's, it's, it's point point 0.4%. Four percent. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's good news, because there's a lot of gas to form new stars. So the universe will go on for quite a while, right? Oh, so the intergalactic, the intergalactic gas will form new? Potentially galaxies and solar systems? I think if you figure that out, you'll go to Stockholm. It's cold there, so you... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> intergalactic gas. It sounds like, um, like dancing at a club. Like, oh, the intergalactic gas is about to come on. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be a very popular no, band at all. So. No, I don't, I don't think, think so. Anyone would see <laughs> that. A, are you suggesting a band name, intergalactic gas? Maybe it gas should be, yeah. Yeah. Or intergalactic bloating. I think that should, that twenty three percent should be uh, Dark Lives Matter. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Nailed that. Amen. <laughs> it's all I have. It's all I have. <laughs> you can crush on that one. I don't, don't, don't say all gas matters, Holger. All right. Yeah. Well, watch don't, it. Ever, watch don't, don't ever. Don't ever. Don't ever say it. Don't ever say it. <laughs> <laughs> We're focusing on dark gas tonight. <laughs> dark, All right? Yeah. Okay. And dark energy. Dark energy. Dark, dark matter. Gas I knew it was the reason they brought me on the show. Actually, so this wasn't intended to be a political slide, right? <laughs> there, there, we there, spent months figuring this out. We're in San Francisco. Everything's yeah. political. If it, if it was a political slide, there'd be an S here, right? Yeah. <laughs> but to be honest, for that March for Science, you don't mind if I hold a sign that says Dark Lives. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually make that sign you for you. Sign. Oh, yeah, I okay, would. thank you. I'd I would give it, it to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so we have, so this, um, 
is the ninety six percent is that considered? Is we should call that space or like outer space? Uh, everything's space, I guess. But um, and that's that's a vacuum. Mostly, except for the dark matter and the dark energy, right? W Duh. Wait, so <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Have you ever tried vacuuming in dark <laughs> energy? Do you ever clean your house? Jesus. Um, Excuse me. I got a patent to apply for. So, um, so, so tell us, so this, um, this intergalactic gas, that's... Um, New, that's dust and cosmic uh -huh. rays and neutrinos, uh, all, all these types of... Yeah. Okay. And, and that's going to... F yeah. Stuff. Uh, stuff was the word. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah. This is... <laughs> I'm gonna go. Okay. This that's is it. hard subject matter, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, if you... Th I mean, give me, like... Right, we have so many things in science that are kind of more like in front of our faces. Like anatomy, for example, is right here, right? But um, you tell me about cosmic intergalactic gas, I'm just like, what the hell does that even look like? Because you can't see it, it's so abstracted away from. I guess that's another ticket to Stockholm. Yeah. <laughs> no. Are you just trying to send him to Stockholm? How much yeah. money do you make? Yeah. You get him a ticket, it's a great place to visit. Is, your, is the point that you're making that space is like fucking crazy, man? Bro. I'm totally with you. That's the I've next. Always said that. That's the, that's 14 year olds we should have hung out. <laughs> that's the next like seven questions. Yeah. Is space fucking crazy? Is space fucking yeah. crazy? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's Super right. hell yeah. <laughs> Double hell. Holger, why are you trying to send us to Stockholm? Yeah. You're trying to get there, right? Okay, to explain. It feels um, like. St does someone here have Stockholm Syndrome? Not uh. It's where the Nobel so, Prize is. So right. just like everybody uh -huh. loves watching a movie, right? But nobody's interested in learning how to exactly handle a camera or lots of people go to acting school and whatever, right? And in the end, <laughs> the, I'm the Academy whatever part. of Motion Picture Arts set up a big show that they hold once a year. It's called the Oscars, right? And everybody watches that even the people who have no idea how to hold a camera, <laughs> including myself, right? And in science, we have set up a similar thing. It happens in Stockholm once a year. And whoever gets invited there gets really famous. It's the one celebrity moment of science. It's utterly unfair. Absolutely. <laughs> if a discovery is named after a person, you can 100% be sure that it's named after the wrong person. <laughs> That's that list again I was mentioning. Remember that? <laughs> all those scientists getting all the push. When I said, when I said, got a short list. Yeah, and not more like a list, like a basement full of people's pictures on the wall. You could know with all these lines drawn, with Google the addresses. Cut out. Yeah. But it's the one thing where people say, "Okay, I want to be there. I want to aspire to this because I get to talk to the king of Sweden." It, with a tall hat, right? <laughs> I don't even own a tall it hat. Gives a shit about the king of how Sweden. <laughs> how many? I didn't know Sweden had a king. <laughs> they do. How many uh, scientific Nobel prizes are given? Ah, uh, good question. Physics, chemistry. There's none in math. Um, maybe Eric knows it. Eric is my grad student. He's up there in the other. Medicine. This is a very important F one. Physics, chemistry, medicine. No, biology is part of medicine. The Bible? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> I already <laughs> made that joke. Oh, uh, you're right. <laughs> I'm calling it back. My I think, okay, so what I'm learning right now is we need to create a grassroots movement to make the Nobel Prize system for science more like the Oscars and like the Super Bowl and stuff like that. I think, I think he's saying the opposite. Yeah. Right? It's already yeah. like that. Right. right. It's already like that. Wait, it's, 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 it's kind S of vein. like that. Oh, we, we don't want to draw more attention and like more science prizes and how about listen this? more innovation? If, how about this? If you win the correct, prize, correct. you meet the, uh, the king of Sweden and he punches you in the face. <laughs> Therefore, like, I don't like, want to take credit for this. It's like, it's like what are you UFC? Saying? What are you saying? Yeah, UFC. There's too much Cage placed match. on that one prize that's disproportionate to the amount of work, work that goes that into Actually, it. Actually, that's, that's what it. most people would argue, and they right. are right. But I think the Nobel Prize is still a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's the one celebrity yes. moment of science. Yeah. Yes. There's yeah. no yes. other. Correct. Right. So it could be given to teams and named after teams uh, of people. That's true. Okay, that's so true. what... I, 
I, I'm still wanting to make that shit as big as the Super Bowl, okay? I, okay. All right, cool. Fuck. All right. Fuck. We'll have, we'll have uh, yeah, Lady Gaga. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, that is still extremely important to make The disco happen. stick. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that. Okay. All, all right. right. Shall, shall on. we yeah, move on? That's a hard one. Who's, who's Wait, answering this? Not just ask your friend. That. What's the question, Holger? What is your name? <laughs> Joey. Easy. Eureka. <laughs> what right. is your quest? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, you long played me, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, I don't like being tricked. <laughs> what is your fa- Exactly. <laughs> All right, what is the role of dark matter? All right, comedians, thoughts? The role of dark matter? Okay. Corinda? <laughs> There's somebody. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry, wait. I, thought you, I thought you were on in this one. I <laughs> uh, Any thoughts? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Joey take that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Pull out, pull out some what Saratoga. Pull out some I, Saratoga. Don't, I don't think, I don't think <laughs> dark <laughs> matter has to be a particular role. You know, right. it can be whatever <laughs> it wants right. to be. In right. fact, I'm sick and tired <laughs> of people even... <laughs> but, but what are you what are you doing to make a change? You right. sitting on the sideline yeah. just saying this? Or I'm using something? my art right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got, you got all this all this matter privilege over here. I like it. I like it. Unbelievable. I, I think somebody has a real answer. Okay. Let, 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 let's, let's take the some answers world. from people that have not answered. No, 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 no. But but she's really eager to say okay. something. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Placeholder for an effect that we see on other things that we can actually observe. Just what effect? Contraction. Yeah. yeah. What do you work? This person. Eureka. Yeah. Let, that let's hear some other okay. voices. Right. Let's see who's getting all closer. Right. All right. I think she works in science. <laughs> all right. All right. I think that yeah. a lot of them do. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a science class. We um, it, it doesn't it. It's kind of what she was saying. It explains the gravity, or at least the attractive or repulsive forces that um, that light matter can't explain. Yeah, and we need more specifics. <laughs> Do I at least get like half credit? Uh-huh. <laughs> Holger will I hug wanna, you I wanna, at the I want to give her something because she said light matter. I don't think we've had uh, that. light uh, matter. All right, before. <laughs> We got a whole new bit okay. coming. <laughs> right? you, got that, you got like ten minutes out of this. Um, I think dark matter is like the cosmic soup that everything kind of swims in, like the intermediary. So space time is like a big ass self contained pool that's kind of out there, and dark matter is like the thing that um like so like when you talk about gravity, it's a bend in space time. That's a bending of the dark matter. And close. Nobody was wrong. I, I'm looking for Everyone's one more right. hey, hold on, hold But on. no one's um, super right? Hold on. <laughs> and he said we'll big ass pool, to be honest. That's at least half <laughs> credit. Anytime you can curse. When like, I want to go where he is. I want to visit his big ass pool. Doesn't dark matter hold the galaxies together? I, 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 I'm beginning to seem partial here because Jackie... That's pretty. Jackie is the wife of Eric, who is my graduate student. <laughs> but oh, oh. what she said is exactly what I wrote on the next slide. And yeah. Eureka! 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 Yeah, it helps. Round of applause. I love that she said it no nonchalantly, though. Yeah. She's like, doesn't it hold? Right. What well, helps when together? You, it no. helps when you got on his computer and saw the slideshow the night before. I should Would you say, go? F- I got it. I should it. say that it keeps none galaxies of you from spinning apart. All right, yeah. so that's keeping things together. Gravity. Ooh. I got this. I know it's a bird, but this is supposed to be a gravity illusion. Yeah, you know what's going on. Whoa! Oh. What's go- Are we bending time and space? You want to try it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're gonna get a broken. I uh, think you need a refund. You need a yeah. refund. Yeah, this is a it broken. It broke like it's some stuff is coming off of it. Thank you, Amazon. Dark <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am right. oh, flipping the bird. Nice. I should say that none Everybody of you... Everybody wants to be a you, comic. <laughs> every answer was correct. None of you were wrong. I was just waiting for the word galaxy. <laughs> oh, and he's particular. So, what's, what's this? So, this is the galaxy, right? And it's spinning. And because it's spinning, it wants to... 
rotational switch. It velocity. has an off-on switch. I, I put it in the on position. That seems to work better. This kind of looks like uh, lesbian porn. So, to me. James. Ha, ha, ha. I can see that. I can. <laughs> Calculated and measured. Are those two I, like terms? I, like I see finger. Like I see some other James. stuff. But go ahead. Finish. <laughs> finish your. Uh, it's like the chart of like the female <laughs> orgasm. Yeah. Just kind of continues. Top and bottom. Calculated and measured. Is that? that w- one second. James, and it takes about a thousand, ten thousand years to. <laughs> J- James, can we get the lights off? Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so the oh. galaxy is kind of this this person that holds a stone on a on a thread, right, and spinning it around. And the faster you spin, the more force is pulling you outside. So, but those stars very far away from the center of the galaxy, they don't feel a lot of gravity pulling them back in. So they should rotate very slowly, otherwise they would just fly away, right? And so people thought that the stars very far away would spin very slowly. But this is not what was observed. What was observed is that the speed stays more or less constant. means there's way more gravity than there should be. And that means either old Einstein was wrong, and there are people seriously considering that, okay? maybe the theory of gravity is not quite accurate, or there is more matter than meets the eye. And that's, most scientists lean towards that. And so that stuff is called dark matter because it's dark and you can't see it. So that's that. <laughs> so, so we're a bunch of apes that are now trying to put a finger on how it all works. Yeah, and we're not doing a very good job Where'd you get a screwdriver? Yeah. Oh, the screwdriver is very important. First, oh. of all, <laughs> first of all, it's to figure out who gave the right answer. Uh. Right? That <laughs> 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 Remember when he said sociopath? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God, we have to open the brain first, see what's inside. Uh, uh, pull out the brain, spin it. There it goes, dark matter. Gray matter. That's it. What's that? No, quantum wow. mechanic. She's, She's right. nailing it herself. <laughs> she, hey, She's quantum, quantum mechanic. mechanic. Right. That's very good. With uh, a little, she's kind of on a roll. Ever since she got shot down with her answer, she's been peppering in jokes. She's like, boom, yeah. boom, she's boom. She's moved from that side. That's right. That's right. I love uh, it. Ha, ha. Hol- Holger, let's, wait, let's get into this just a little bit more. All right. So, you need um, this? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you're, so, you're saying the... Gravity supposed to be more here. That's where all the light comes from, right? Here. So that's where it's brightest. And so if you were an astronomer looking at this for the first time, you would say, okay, there must be way more stars here. So that's where all the mass is. And there's not so many stars here. So, so there's supposed less, to be less mass, mass and less gravi- gravitational pull. Yeah. Okay, and so the gravitational pull out here is equal to what is out here, or close. That's what the measurement shows. And, and so then there needs to be more gravity that's uh, invisible. That's right. So either this little matter causes more gravity than we think. That's the theory that Einstein is wrong. The theory that Einstein is wrong has not been correct very often. Einstein's never <laughs> wrong, bro. Um, or, or there is more stuff there. Uh, right? yes. Stuff that doesn't happen to emit light, and therefore it's called dark, and that would be the dark matter. And w- is dark matter only around galaxies? Mostly. It's mostly... So there's a thing called a galactic cluster. Many galaxies band together and form a cluster, so the dark matter would be concentrated in the clusters also. Uh-huh. But it's not outside of galaxies or clusters. And is there a way to detect dark matter? I wish. Um, <laughs> nobody has found one yet. Okay. So, and that's the big problem. Um, we know it's out there. We can even measure how much there is because we have this data. And so from that data, you can calculate how much there should be. But we know it can't be atoms. It can't be neutrinos. It can't be anything we know. And so it's a big puzzle. Nobody knows what it is. So, <clears throat> so in a... In a solar system, does Neptune move as fast as Mercury does around our star? Mercury is way faster. Okay, but here, so in a solar system, Mercury is way faster. 
But in, right. a, but in a galaxy, the stars here move the same speed as the stars here. Yeah, and that's what's puzzling. You hear that? Puzzling. It's a big well. puzzle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look stopped too. They're just watching what's happening. So, but okay. by, by the laws uh, that we understand physics, it should be moving faster closer to the center where there's more because mass. Because all the mass is here. It's pulling it in very strongly yep. by gravity. So either it spins really fast to balance the pull of gravity, or it's going to drop in. And so inside here, there's no problem, right? You see the measured and the calculated curve agree in here. Yeah. The problem is yeah. when you get very far away, the calculated speed goes way down, but the measured speed doesn't. Yeah, so this is solar, this is what solar systems look like. Yes, more or less, more or less, except in a solar system, all the mass is in the sun. So in a solar system, the red curve would keep going up. Ah. That's a different graph. All right, <laughs> I don't, I don't, a much easier one to understand. <laughs> um. So the other reason I brought this is because this says uh -huh. that I'm unifying quantum mechanics and gravity, which I wish I could do, but I can't. So I thought I'd bring this to show that I'm really an experimentalist, right? Mm. <laughs> a quantum mechanic. As you you say. might find yourself in <laughs> Stockholm someday. I don't, have a little, <laughs> I don't have a little squishy can of atoms, though, unfortunately. Is, is there another role of dark matter besides keeping galaxies together? There is a role in those galactic clusters. It keeps them together too, right? But that's all the evidence we have is from keeping galaxies together and from keeping the clusters together. Maybe it has more roles, but we wouldn't know about this it. This is the only chart they got. <laughs> this is it. This is the only one they have. The, the ethics of dark matter. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. On we go to the next question. What's the role of dark energy? Comedians? Uh, Com yeah, definitely. Um, well, I'd say it's, does, it's not like the protagonist, obviously, right? <laughs> just talking, you know, it's maybe a side character. Take, you know, maybe you just talk about it off screen, you know? It's not, definitely a side character, probably like a roommate, doesn't have a life. Doesn't have a life, kind of um, lurking just about. Sort of more you know, hip, though. It's yeah, just more kind of, hip. you know. <laughs> Talking about yeah, what's more going hip, on. yeah. Always brings you down. I don't know. Is that? I think we're going different that's ways. Negative, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> negative <laughs> energy. That's right. Yeah. What, right, what was that? Wait, let's let's take some um, answers from our from our audience. All right. Who has not answered yet? Okay, let's go up here first. Here we go. Uh, dark energy is an abstraction to explain why the speed at which galaxies fly apart is increasing. Eureka! Eureka, <laughs> everybody! Yeah. Yes! That's what I'm saying. I almost All said right. that first, yeah. but... <laughs> and for you... Oh. Oh. All who, who right. Who is that? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know who that is, but he's saying, get out of here. That's what he's saying. <laughs> he's like, get on out, we're moving apart. <laughs> uh, for such a brilliant answer, from such a brilliant man, you should look like a brilliant man. Oh, Einstein. 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 It's a disguise. It's a, it's a disguise because oh. no one will notice you if you wear this. Yeah. Completely Especially disguised. Especially in the tenderloin. In the tenderloin. Wait, what, what is it? What, what, what is the price? To <laughs> this <laughs> is the Albert Einstein Instant Disguise Kit. Yeah. You just right. whip it yeah. out. Super useful. When well, you need to look like great him. for school plays and book get reports. Out. That's what it says. Yeah. Congratulations! Can we? And it, yeah. Feel free to uh, to put it on. Feel feel free to put it on now if you want to. Uh, we always say this about the prizes, but send us a tweet afterwards. So, so do you think that Albert Einstein deserves to be like the number one scientific icon as he seems to be? Like he's on college posters. That's like some Jimi Hendrix shit. He didn't even die. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> did he die young? Why is he? <laughs> no, he did not die I know. young. I know. Um, I'm reading his biography. So for the last two <laughs> years. Uh, I'm listening. You're not the part where he dies. <laughs> I think nobody deserves it. 
because science is much more a collaborative thing than that you might think. But if you have to make one person really famous, Einstein is not the worst candidate. What I really love about him is that he was going against the establishment at the time. He was not at a university. They were all very eager to hire him when he got famous, but he f before he had a He was like, job. fuck Stockholm, dude. <laughs> that's right. I shut up there, dude. <laughs> and that's why he's on that's college dorm, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Fuck, the fuck the man. Stockholm. Science. Yeah. You were saying earlier that there's there's like a theory that, that I Einstein's wrong. Is there is there like any scientists who are willing to stand up and say Einstein's wrong? And what happens when they do? Is it kind of like they get like drive-by shootings or like <laughs> like do you guys get in the car and then you go find them and you know it's just like Tupac and Biggie just yeah. take them out? You just drive right. by the lab. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like what did you say? What did you say? <laughs> Yo, I'm the, one in the, the one in the lab cup. The one in the lab cup. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I mean, it's not the most fashionable theory, but it's a serious theory. It's called modified Newtonian dynamics. And it's not the majority of opinion of scientists, but it's a recognized, let's say, minority opinion. I like and those it. are important. And those are important, yeah. Um, <laughs> you are doing it this evening. Oh my god. I love sitting next to you. You know, light matter. Light matter. <laughs> I can look at this. We uh, got this. Uh, we hold uh, okay. it down. We hold it down. This is like a, this is like a new sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Black Lives Matter and one white one that does. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's like, a lot, yeah. It's I'm like, gonna, I'm going to shop that to the NBC. I think, I, think, I think they'll buy it. It's like you're on a march and you strapped him to your back. <laughs> As if a white guy needs help, but okay. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Maybe like to, like to absorb <laughs> the called, bullets. It's, it's called the black pack. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are right to owe that. You guys it, are it's, right. It's better than like a white fanny pack, which would be like, you don't want it down to, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I put I don't you know. around here. Yeah. <laughs> Joey's hair is hanging down. <laughs> All right, excuse us. We were, we're working on a patent here, excuse all me. All right, all right. <laughs> Wait, um, maybe before we get into this, uh, another, yeah. that, was, that was great. Um, that was a tangent, was I don't know fantastic. where. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, maybe before we get into this, let's see the, um, another analogy. Um, all right. Maybe for uh -huh. understanding um, on well, the other well, side. Well, this makes things. sense. Dark energy. Um, <laughs> um, so it would be like uh, like a, a flower uh, blossoming from a point like this and then slowly being driven apart like that. The universe is a flower? <laughs> Aww. Okay, let's, that's just a pickup line, dude. <laughs> that sounds like something in his Tinder profile. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's sheet talk. That's sheet talk. Like, this is how I'm going to open your flower, girl. Like, I'm going to just open it just like so that. So if the universe is opening <laughs> up, we, what else would naturally... <laughs> Let's go back to the science. So, so, it's, so, the, ga so the galaxies start here. When okay. it's hot, a big bang, hot galaxies, and then galaxies over time are driven apart by dark energy. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying big bang, hot gases. We're not leaving the subject, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, all right. I want analogies are fun. Are they? All right, all right. Cool, cool. Right, uh, cool. I hope it makes it more relatable. That's mm -hmm. so important. <laughs> it's super relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Intergalactic farts. All right. All right. <laughs> to our explanation, which I was literally unable to decipher this. Can you explain it? So <laughs> there's this Big Bang Theory, right? And so the universe is flying apart, but there's gravity. So you might think, Either the gravity would, would pull it back together one day, or at least it should slow down the expansion, right? So the question, so back in the 90s, two people that are both at Berkeley, which is the better school in the Bay Area, right? <laughs> Just right. want to make sure to make that yeah. point. Yeah. Anyway, um, one was Rich Muller, and he had a graduate student named Saul Perlmutter. They said, okay, somebody's got to measure that slowing down, and they found a way to do so. Because sometimes stars, when they get old, explode, right? 
And these explosions... What is that called? A supernova. Okay. Supernova, right? Um, so, these supernova are believed to always have the same brightness, which means if you see one that's really bright, it must be closer. And if you see one that's dim, it must be far away, because you think they all the same brightness. It, not, it doesn't even matter the size of the star? Like a small star has the same size brightness? A yeah. supernova as a large star? No, the thing is, before the star goes boom, it would shed a lot of mass. And so by the time it goes boom, they all look the same. Okay. That's what well, that's people a true think, statement. Right? When things go boom, so everything ends up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you want Pretty to much all the same. It doesn't yeah. matter how big it is. When so. you start. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. It's, you know, it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> My supernova, your supernova. <laughs> My supernova. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the brightness of a supernova gives you a measure how far away it is, and therefore how long the light took to reach us, which right. means the dim supernova that we see are the oldest. Okay? So this axis on the plot says how bright is the supernova, and therefore how far is it away, and therefore how old is it, okay? Mm -hmm. And now we can measure how fast it moves away from the Earth by measuring how much redder it looks than originally. It's this thing, the American ambulances go, ooh, red. Redshift. It's redshift, what, that's right. What is redshift? Redshift is if you, so this lamp, there's a yellow lamp, back there, if I'd be running away from it real fast, I would see it red. Really yeah. fucking fast. You gotta be super scared. First of all, I've never seen a threatening lamp in my life. I'm like, run from that thing, it's gonna turn red. No, but, but you can, if you're standing at the airport and the plane is rolling, right, you hear a really high-pitched noise when it's rolling towards you, yes. and when it's past you, it goes So that's the acoustic analogy of redshift. So we're so we're we're seeing we're seeing the part of Doppler the shift. That's right. That's right. We're, okay, we're seeing the part of the light that's the largest wavelength at when we're going really far. Yes. Yeah. Is that is that like the red light special? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and then can you come back come back to this? So on one axis is the distance of the supernova that's occurring, uh -huh. um, and also the age of the star. Uh -huh. um, and then on this axis is the speed. It's the speed. And so by putting these together, you can make a plot of how long ago did it happen and how fast did the universe expand at the time. Oh. And so if most of these points were in the lower half of the graph, that means the universe oh. would expand slowing down. As everybody expected. Eureka, Alan. Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. <laughs> yes. So, but what they found is um. it's speeding up. It's above this red line. It's speeding <clears throat> up. And that's what nobody expected. And they didn't dare publish that until they found out that their competitors had the same problem. They also found this speeding up. And then they said, okay, maybe it's right. Let's publish that. Okay, so this tells us that the universe, that we're, all the galaxies are being drifted apart faster and faster over time. Yes, exactly. And is there, an, is there a limit to that? or That's the big question. That depends on something that's called the equation of state. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. How, um, how many? <laughs> but right. But not only notice, notice that this graph does say best fit of current data, <laughs> which is like science ease for fucking whatever. Right. <laughs> and I think put the line there, draw a dot, yeah. publish it. That's, this looks like a BART uh, escalator. That's just true. Uh, <laughs> stand yeah. to the left. It's like the red dots right. are representing like people and, from and Daily City, it. and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the yellow dots. <laughs> And you see, the data spreads quite a bit, right? So if you want to disagree with the establishment, yes, yes, yes. it's much better to disagree that dark energy exists because it, it really spreads quite a bit, right? Um, it's not so good to disagree that dark matter exists or that things fall down. Or 
Yes. So uh-huh. wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> wait. That's not what my psychologist says. <laughs> All right. When did when did we start having the tools to be able to map when supernovas happen? Because isn't this like three billion years ago? How did we have the tools, or am I, or is it just the distance of the supernova to us? So it takes old telescopes. You don't need very fancy telescopes. Those supernovas are so bright. It's very easy to pick them up. The problem is you have to detect quite a bunch of them. So what you have to do is take lots of pictures of the sky and see if a star suddenly gets brighter. And let's say 30 years ago, that would have been done manually. How how manually was that done 30 years ago? Very manually. You would look at pictures, right? You take a photo. Super (laughs) manually. Both hands. Both hands are being used. (laughs) You would not download all these pictures, you would have someone send them to you by mail, and then you would go oh through them. Oh my goodness. Mail? <laughs> <laughs> mail, right. Um, it's like AOL and stuff. Oh. Back in the day. Wait, and you would look at like billions of stars and try and see if one of them looks brighter than the other in and, a, like a year ago? And that's the bottleneck, right? Nobody did that. Yeah. So lots of supernova were photographed but missed because you wouldn't go through all these pictures. Yes, so yes. what these guys did is they programmed a computer to do the job for them, right? What was that? So I, I heard, it felt like there was like a squeaking <laughs> squirrel or something. Slowly you hear that? died in the back. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Is everyone back okay? Is, some, is someone laughing really? I, I don't know what that was. Yeah. I, th- I just feel it's expanding away from me right now. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> But I, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, what technologies do we use now for this? Computers, obviously. Right? It's just like porn. Explain like computer. <laughs> what is this computer? You're yeah. pictures, <laughs> you're yeah. using both your hands, and yeah. now yeah. computers <laughs> do everything. I, yeah. so I don't do process. manual anymore. I, I'm yeah, yeah, I, I've, yeah, got, yeah, yeah. I've got a whole machine. A whole machine. <laughs> oh, Holger, okay, so n- now we have a... We have a it's con- called a Holger. <laughs> <laughs> We we have a con. Are you sure you need a whole machine? Yeah, a whole machine. Oh, so, like so we have a whole <laughs> without the W. All right. Uh, <laughs> you guys don't like puns, do you? <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we're now we're now using ground to base telescopes as well as Hubble and uh-huh. uh, and Kepler. Well, Kepler's b- kind of not doing that, but whatever. Um, but we're now using both. Te- we're using telescopes and then computer analysis from like minute to minute to, se- to second to second of like the whole sky? More of like every- day to day, right? You would feed okay. all these images into a computer and the computer tells you this image from yesterday looks different than today. And then you can take a manual look to confirm, but you don't have to go through all the images by hand. Wow, so cool. Thank you, technology. That is incredibly important, yes. Yeah. All right, let's, cool. let's, let's use technology again. To click. <laughs> <laughs> Onward we go. Uh, do you guys feel like you know more about dark energy and dark matter? Sweet. Yes. yes. I know 100% more. <laughs> <laughs> when we Before started. <laughs> All right, on we go. Roughly when in the history of the universe does cosmic acceleration driven by dark energy become dominant? Comedians? Uh, Ooh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when James Brown was born, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when who? James Brown. Oh, yeah, okay. That's true. I was just going to say recently. <laughs> so, <laughs> you would, um, yeah. That covers yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Recently. Yeah, so. I agree with them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have an answer? Yes. Uh, so, wouldn't it be from the start just because it was always um, from the Big Bang? The universe has always been inflating and increasing. Ah, but that's the that's the inflation part. Nobody knows about that. Um. But you said it, it became <laughs> dominant. Was it submissive before? Did it like flip rolls? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. She's okay. I, th- I think we saw another hand. Yes. Okay. Hold on. February. What's that? February. I think that's a pretty good answer. Um, From on, on like the the year thing. This is an example of. Over oh. precision, right? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're too exact, man. All right. 
Is it not yet because you said only 34% of the universe was dark energy and the much larger portion was dark matter? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> You're waffling. So is, she, is that yet? No? Yes? Wait, to, to be clear, 73% dark energy. And uh, tw yeah. 23% dark matter. It's 23% dark. Uh, yeah. dark. The answer is Life much matter. simpler than anything anybody said so far. Okay, other, <laughs> other, other guesses. All right, <laughs> simpler. When, the only thing I when, remember. Roughly when in the history of the universe does cosmic acceleration driven by dark energy become dominant? <laughs> Hello, welcome. Come you on. got an answer? Do you have an answer, sir? Is, is it coming sitting down? From the beginning. I think actually, you were right. Recently, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's correct. Eureka. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Give okay. Me an All right. All right. Now and what I should we now. get you? You like to read? Yeah. Of course obviously. he doesn't. Obviously. All right. Oh yeah. Well, Let's go. That? The elegant universe. All Woo! right. Right. String theory. All right. And he'll read that the day after never. There you yeah. go. <laughs> also, I think this is the first time in Eureka history that a comedian was won a prize. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You gotta have smarter comedians, yeah. then, don't you? <laughs> comedians that are about to read. About to read. <laughs> He's gonna read soon, guys. You should watch him when he does it. It's impressive. So, so the secret is to make your answer fairly vague. Yeah, I think so. That's, yeah, that's how I get through life. Uh, <laughs> so this is the details, right? What is this? Quantum so, fluctuations. One of you mentioned inflation, and that's really when the Big Bang sets off. Or boom, it goes pretty large very fast. And then it expands a Can you little explain bit. that? How does it go boom and then go really, really fast? Because of inflation, it goes so big very fast. No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He just did. He went boom fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much covers the vague. The vague, yeah, vague answer. Okay, continue. The, yes. the, the honest answer is nobody knows. So okay. the reason people think it goes boom very fast is that would be a natural explanation for why the universe is so homogenous. Yeah, homogenous in terms of... Galaxies Milk? or in terms yeah, of dark yeah. energy or in terms <laughs> of... Everywhere you look in the sky, you see roughly the same number of galaxies and stars ah. and so on. Oh, okay. yeah, it's, it's and so if it really goes boom very fast, you would expect to get a really good homogeneous mixture, right? But nobody knows why this would happen. All right. Then the ignorance goes down a bit and the knowledge <laughs> goes up a bit. <laughs> and the universe is expanding at a roughly constant rate, maybe slowing down a little bit due to gravity, and then dark energy sets in, and it starts speeding up, and that's roughly now, maybe in the past few billion years, or February, as someone <laughs> February. <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's expanding now? This kind of looks like a legging, like the Cosmo leggings. You know? <laughs> Am I the only one? No. And so w w do we think that it's plateauing, or do we think it's forever accelerating? We don't know. That depends on this mystery equation of state, which essentially asking what happens when you dilute the dark energy? Will it dilute and therefore get weaker, kind of? Uh -huh. That would mean maybe it's not going faster forever. It means it plateaus if it gets weaker, if it gets stretched. Yeah, or does it maybe stay the same strength, in which case this would be driven apart faster and faster and faster. I feel like the programmer of the universe is having a great time watching apes try and figure this out. <laughs> wow, so much to figure out still. Everyone's just yeah. silent, just staring <laughs> yeah. at this. Uh, like we said, space is crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we yeah. told you, going in. The fun thing about this is there's so much stuff that nobody really knows. In yes. my home field, atomic physics, everything is in principle known, and for every question, there's a smart ass that knows it better than you. Uh, mm. but, but here's some questions that nobody knows, so that's good. That is so good, yeah. <laughs> future <laughs> smart asses, study yeah, this. And that, yeah, we, our previous shirts actually said smarty pants on the back of them, so uh -huh. future smarty <laughs> pants. Is. Right. Um, follow up question to this is. Yeah. Um, how, how did we know that the acceleration, dark energy, kicked in like five billion years ago? How do we know that it happened like around some time? And why didn't it happen earlier? Mostly from math. So you can measure what 
how much dark matter and dark energy there is now. And then you can calculate backwards in time. I thought you said that we couldn't measure, though. How? Yeah, but the thing is, the graph that I showed previously... He's just changing his answer, not a big deal. Dude, so, the graph I showed previously, which had the time on this axis, right? This is turned around and the time is this axis. The graph I showed previously goes back here, maybe. Okay, yeah. It would be great if somebody could make a better supernova search and look back here. Then we'd yes, know yes. better. So oh, yes, all yes, we yes, know correct, correct, yes. comes from measuring this part and then calculating backwards. Uh, okay, okay. And now in the future, we'll know if it's really accelerating or not as well. Uh, we'll, well see. We keep um, studying it. You can <laughs> <laughs> it depends if, the, uh, if depends if science funding continues. It depends keep on looking science at funding. It. That's keep right. Looking. <laughs> it's like a cup spilt milk or something. It's all right. Tipped over. All right, next one. Y yep, let's see if we can go on to the next question. Yeah, Holder. what are dark matter and dark energy made of? Comedians? Uh, stuff. Dark, <laughs> dark <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Things. Dark <laughs> stuff. Things. Um, uh, win the prizes. Of <laughs> well, let's see. What is it made of? Um, is it anti-matter? It's, it's made of stuff that has other stuff that keeps other stuff together. <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> it, and it's certainly gluten-free, right? We don't find that in the universe. <laughs> Thank God. I don't want to get bloated when I'm out there in the universe with my dark Is matter. it vegan? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that. I hope not. All right, let's go ahead and take it out. Real to the answers. Audience. All right, who hasn't answered yet? All right, just two? Or two? We don't know. We don't know? We don't know? That's exactly right. Eureka! Eureka! <laughs> All right. We should have just told the truth. <laughs> 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 we would have been right. <laughs> <laughs> she just sold yeah. Nobody story, story of my life. <laughs> this, by the way, is a gif of Joey in about 10 more years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and when he's on the I, road I, touring I, doing stand up, he's like. <laughs> I think he's holding something uh, homogenous, isn't he? Oh, yeah. It's a little homogenous, and some Light dude that. just jumps <laughs> in. Um, all right, Eureka. Surprise. Now. Um, oh. For the, for the last, we gave you a book about string theory. Very, you know, very complex book. Uh, the next one we have... Even more complex. Yes, even more complex. I don't know if you can handle it. Baby Loves Quarks. <laughs> huh? <laughs> now, now, this isn't very long. I know we'd have too much time to show, but it's a very short book, and I would love to learn about quarks if it was read to me with a German accent. Do <laughs> oh. you mind just reading a little bit of Baby Loves Quarks before we give it away? <laughs> okay. This, uh, that's okay. All, that's all those okay. years of schooling, schooling. Longer, <laughs> leading so up to this. This is written by Ruth Spiro and illustrated by Irene Chen. All right. You're very official. Right. Looks like you've done this yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, he reads all the time. Okay. <laughs> Baby likes to build a tower with blocks. <laughs> I like that he's All showing right. you the picture. Uh, I like it. I feel like I'm back. Like you guys school. are stupid. He's like, see, I'm following it so far. I know you guys can't follow along. I'm gonna show you. Nature likes to build things too. <laughs> come, Baby come on in. builds come on in. with blocks. You're welcome to come take a seat. You'd like yeah, bring your kids. And, and <laughs> now, <laughs> come on in, take a seat. Come on in. Don't be shy. We're, this is this is the uh, the children's hour. We're just <laughs> <laughs> this is every uh, science comedy show. We have a reading of a children's book. Yeah. And and I think this is where the poet switches from baby builds blocks to the real essential things of life. Nature builds with quarks. Ooh. Quarks. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> now I'm lost. <laughs> This is too good. Quarks like to stick together. Aww. Aww. Three quarks make a proton or a neutron. This is really accurate. This <laughs> is <awesome. laughs> uh, Will you be my neutron? <laughs> this is so good. Protons, protons and neutrons stick together to make a nucleus. Oh shit, I got it by this book. <laughs> <laughs> and electrons and that makes an atom. 
and it says nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, whoosh. Yeah. Wow, yeah. whoosh. Awesome. Wow. If you don't have the whoosh, it doesn't it, even it, work. It doesn't make, it doesn't it doesn't make, make sense, sense without the whoosh. Should go on? Or yes, yeah. it's, you're, you're like yeah. three this quarters of the This is the most I've understood you <laughs> to. <laughs> 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 if you could just speak slower. <laughs> The problem is it doesn't rhyme, right? It's so much nicer to read to a baby when it rhymes. <laughs> and atoms together, and that makes a molecule, which, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so there's water and there's methane. Um, which is gas, intergalactic, going back. <laughs> Everything in the world is made of atoms and molecules, even baby. Oh. <laughs> Brings it home. Brings it home. Wow, scientists can smash a nucleus to break it apart. Baby thinks that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this headed? That is so great. Yeah. Smash. Bye bye tower. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Oh. Give it up. <laughs> There's your Don't lesson. Say that out loud. They're going to be following and us now. Like, yeah. And then. Okay, now I get it. All right, talk's over. This. Wow. There's another baby book that I really like. It's called Go the Fuck to Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read that before or after the Quark book? <laughs> All right. um, I think Eureka should potentially pick up more copies of books that are written that way. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> that it's relatable. It's so relatable. relatable. Holy cow, that was well written. Uh, All right. Oh, wait, there yeah. was an explanation, right? No, that was his explanation. No, there isn't. <laughs> the mean, dude is always the explanation. The, the explanation is this, this could be a whole lot uh, more complicated, yeah. right? New shit has come to light. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Hence, hence the book, <laughs> which will break it down. Anyway. All right. Okay, now we switch to the screwdriver part of okay. this. Um, the screwdriver, right? Um, so you want to read the question now? Why aren't lasers better long-ranged weapons? Because uh, shields, the guy's got shields. <laughs> Block, no? All right. Uh, better long range weapons? weapons? I don't know. Lasers are sick. It raves. That's yeah, all that's true. I know <laughs> about lasers. You could toss a glow stick, kind of looks like a flying laser. Yeah. That's an option. All right. All right, all right. We have, we, have some, we have some answers from up here. You have an answer. Is it because the earth is curved? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, they, they don't even get that far. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, side. Don't they disperse over time and space? That's right. Yay! That's correct. <laughs> Eureka! Eureka! <laughs> they disperse. I like that word, disperse. Yeah, All word. right. So Who so said that? We get to use it in a <laughs> sentence. Oh, oh, that's super cool. That's yeah, that's I want that. I want that's that. That's awesome. <laughs> Pay me in lasers. That, that is fine. what a 14-year-old should patent. Something like Look that. Look at that. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, won't ruin I the can batteries take this with you. me back to Oakland and see how <laughs> that... Uh, yeah, I would pay you 10 bucks to take this in the tenderloin with you and just start... <laughs> and just start pointing it point at, people. at people. I hope a lady won that. It looks <laughs> you have a lady... <laughs> That looks like something else. Yeah. Uh, uh, this looks like something from uh, Good Vibrations. But, yeah, yeah, uh, Good Vibrations. <laughs> it's intergalactic. <laughs> All right. Damn, those have gotten so much more cool since we were This kids, one is right? cool. That's true. All right, and yeah, enjoy. <laughs> you couldn't let it go, could you, Kevin? I, I, it was tough for me. I wanted to just you know, know, it fire away. Was, it was, Congratulations. I think it wanted to stay in my hand. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, what... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> What is this? Uh, Take the acid uh, now. So that's how the laser LSD. beam... LSD. Oh. Which side is it coming from? Uh, from the left, I think. Don't you think? Okay. Mm. Laser's coming from the left, okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so then it, what, it, what ha why does it condense and then expand? Um, that's how it would look like if the speed of light was 100 billion times slower or so, right? And the point uh -huh. is... A laser will always have a thinnest point somewhere. That's called the waist. Always? Always, yeah. Okay. And then it'll disperse and get thicker. So if you want to hurt somebody with a laser beam very much, um, then you can do that if they are close to you, but you can't do that if they are far away because by the time the beam gets there, 
it would be much diluted and not cause much damage. So lasers have thin waist and get thicker as That's you move right. away. Um, well, I don't, I don't know describe. if anyone else who that would apply to. Okay. We won't have to, I feel like I'm about to be shot by a laser for saying that. So, so this is really the first time that I'm learning about laser physics. I mean, never taught that ever. Um, so we have this idea, the, the solar sail. Um, uh -huh. So the solar sail, one gram satellite gets shot off, or there are thousands of them, millions of them, whatever, and then we try and put, propel them with lasers from Earth. So we have to constantly be finding that focal point for every one of them and like powering them kind of more and more with time so that... You mean the tiny little micro satellites yeah. that you want to send off? To um, Proxima Centauri, yeah. Yeah, I've heard about that. And once I've heard about that, I thought, that's, that's so crazy. <laughs> um, but you can calculate how, how much of a laser power you would need to make happen and would actually work. I think it would work, yeah. And so we would need, as the satellite gets further away from us, we would need to increase the power as it goes so that the focal point's pushing, not propelling it forward. I guess we would always make it as strong as we can, which means as they get further away, we can't drive them very hard anymore. And the thing is, they need to be really, 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 really tiny. Correct, right? yeah, yes. Um, so here I'm talking about doing damage to, let's say, a rocket launched in North Korea or so. You can't shoot them down from space with a laser because by the time the laser arrives at the target, the beam would be that thick. You just oh, ruined yes. all the Star Wars movies <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, well, Star, Wars, Star Wars has been lying to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how the Death Star just... How so come uh, laser hair <laughs> removal is so expensive? <laughs> what area of your body you're trying to get that? Out? I don't know, but it's obviously got a lot of follicles it needs to go into. Is it charging me per follicle? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> All right, let let's move on to the next <laughs> one. <laughs> was, was we'll, we'll, we'll we'll work out the economics after the show. <laughs> All right, so so this is laser. So now we're gonna get into even more the significance of lasers. Yeah. Okay, what's uh, LIGO? LIGO. LIGO, it's the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. So they were trying to detect gravitational waves, which get emitted if, let's say, two stars collide. Okay. All right, do you want to read the question? Oh, I, didn't I? How did LIGO detect gravitational waves? All right, mm. comedians. By asking? Ah? Ah? No? All right. They didn't ask me, no. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't ask you. LIGO, how did it detect? I've got nothing. All right. <laughs> nothing on this. Our, our, I don't all know. right, let's we'll take some answers. We've had some. An all right, we can't even get an answer. Um, all right, let's go back here. Yeah, so I think this was about last year in Arizona. They just had a really uh -huh. long ass laser and they kind uh -huh. of detected the tiniest bit of vibration in it to. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. How, how did they detect the tiniest bit of vibration? Oh, they had. Um, Two lasers converging together yeah. at like a really super small point. Yeah, and then this is know. actually very close to the truth. Let, let's <laughs> <laughs> just one, one oh, quick so point. So this, is, this is not a yes or no question. The right? One so quick. Let's hear some more opinions. <laughs> the guy next to you said big ass pool. You said long ass laser. <laughs> just let me know where you guys' minds are at. <laughs> All right. Anyone else have a, uh, a possible answer? All right. Hold on. I saw a hand up here. No. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, all right. I think they used the Michelson Morley uh, interferometer thing. You yeah. guys are awesome. And um, let's see if this gets even better. Is this Kurt? No, he's not. Uh, all right, so okay. they, they shot a laser at a beam splitter, and then it would. All right, never mind then. Well, I guess, the, I guess this warrants a Eureka, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> is, that, is that correct? Is that Eureka? Eureka! Eureka. We want to hear that answer again. So Holger going well, like this actually means yes. Um, why am I doing this? It's using interference. <laughs> All right, for you, my friend, we've got this sweet Schrodinger's cat Finger puppet, <laughs> you know, wave, particle, what is it? I don't know. I'm a lesbian. That's very, very scary. Is that I always want to say a, a cat. I have a pussy on my finger. So and it's, a, it's like up his butt. <laughs> it is. You look at the expression on it. Is it like 
drunk. Okay, yeah, that's right. You finger up his butt. <laughs> that's He's got bad. A Bring over on the his Schrodinger's face. cat right. finger puppet. Enjoy. Give it up. Congratulations. Finger <laughs> cat puppet. And Finger sex puppet. I'm going to give those out for think, Christmas. Do you think we have another val- a valid first part of the answer? Should yeah. For a little yeah. All little right. One? You sir, you got <laughs> a globe. Vol. Here we go. It's a big ass globe. <laughs> or a small ass globe. Oh. Ah, get it now. There you go. There you go, nice. man. Nice. Good. That was a good combo on the answers. That was awesome. All right. Ooh. So... That this is that is, is what was described the pretty much, right? right? Okay. And we've actually got one of those here that I want to show you. Ooh. And so let's let's maybe just move on to the next question and then. Ah, All yeah, right, I let's keep going. Yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah. All, right. All right. Let me get it. Okay. Matter and antimatter annihilate. Can matter annihilate with matter? I like how you say annihilate. Sounds uh, very uh, Arnold. Yeah. Let me get this I machine. Annihilate. Annihilate. I, I, I thought I changed that typo in the second annihilate. Oh, it's that oh. typo. Annihilate. Oh, what is this? Annihilate. What is this annihilate. <laughs> That's where you get at the spa, right? This <laughs> 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 annihilation. <laughs> Look at that typo. Yeah. All right, matter. This is physics, not in English. <laughs> uh, Wait, how do matter and antimatter annihilate? How do they do it? Very fast. <laughs> These vague answers today. Very quickly. Okay, and then matter annihilating. So, with what matter. happens is you have a particle of matter and a particle of antimatter, and they collide, and they, there's some light coming out, so there'll be a bright flash of light, x rays actually, and then they're gone. Okay. And all the energy is huh. in the x rays. Do you really want to say something, right? Uh-huh. Should we let um, her? So wait, well, should we find who, wait. who has an answer for this? Yeah, an answer. Yeah. Wait, Did wait, wait. But bef- okay. okay. Does Bikini Atoll count? Bikini Atoll? Does that count? That's a nuclear explosion, you mean, right? Yes, that's right. Um, not completely. So they didn't have any antimatter there. So they could turn a tiny bit of the matter into an explosion. Um, but what's not matter and antimatter? This is matter and matter, right? Oh, can they annihilate? Yes. <laughs> That's actually not too far from the truth. <laughs> okay. I was, I was expecting a more simplistic thing. <laughs> All right. Um, but I think bringing up the bikini at all is just too cool. <laughs> but she's already got a kid's book, right? <laughs> Does unless, anybody unless else she have said a bikini have wax? Ad- I was like, when do yeah. we get yeah. bikini wax at all? It's Wait, yeah. I missed. <laughs> 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 you go ahead. Hulk Hulk went from lasers <laughs> to bikini I'll wax. I'll annihilate uh-huh. you with some matter. <laughs> uh, well, uh, if this counts, you can uh, smash th- two things together really, really fast, like an atom smasher or CERN, you know, like you accelerate the gold particles to the speed of light just a little bit less and then smash them together and see what happens. You get your quarks that baby loves and stuff like that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so is, the, uh, is that close? I was looking for a different answer, but <laughs> maybe it's just because the question is too fluffy. It's too fluffy? Can matter annihilate with matter? Yes. That's what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. look at yes. Eureka. Yes. I said Eureka. Yes. <laughs> 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 all right. Is that like RuPaul's Drag Race or something? There it is. It says, all right, let's move on to something that really matters. Oh, it's a pun. Oh, boy. All right, and you get, sir, a Eureka T-shirt. Sweet. Um, Maybe we should give it to our yes over here as well. Yes? That oh, well, let's give it to the person who got the answer. Well, there, well, he, uh, you yelled yes, right? Oh, who, yelled, who, who got it right? We have one that has two T-shirts already. So. Okay. <laughs> yes, let All us right, answer. Yeah, all right, round of applause. <laughs> Good job. If, if that's not the right size, speak to us afterward. There's a cool quote on the back, by the way. So what I was looking for was this quantum <laughs> mechanics thingy that you've all heard about, that waves and particles are the same thing. And if I combine two waves, they can add and make a stronger wave, or sometimes they cancel, make a weaker wave, as th- if they oscillate out of phase. And that's a picture, this is the only thing that I'm showing from my own lab that some of my students took, where they said two blobs of 
cesium atoms. This is about a million cesium atoms. And this is about 100,000 cesium atoms. And what happens wow. is these cesium atoms are waves in quantum mechanics. And at this place, these waves were oscillating in phase so that they made a stronger oscillation together. And that means we see more of the atoms. Whereas here, they oscillated out of phase like this. And so these waves cancel. And so we see very few of these atoms. And this entire stuff is called matter wave interferometry, just like LIGO used laser beam interferometry. OK, so you have two, two, so if two particles are running together, their wave runs together, it looks very bright. It's even more spooky. It's the same particle. Oh, yeah, it's the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So it's the same particle <laughs> running together with itself. It's <laughs> running together with itself, a and at different at different uh, parts of the. So the just peaks like you can the... make a light beam going two ways by, let's say you have a mirror, but it's a bad mirror. It lets half the light pass, and half the light gets reflected. Then you have your light beam go two ways, right? It splits, and then you can put more mirrors to make them go back together. And that's when the waves overlap, either in sync, which makes a, a stronger laser beam, a stronger wave, so you see a brighter spot, or they go out of sync, in which case they don't add. And the same holds for atoms. These are waves, too. You can make them add or subtract. And question 10. Can we take All a right. look at this? <laughs> Can we take a look at this? Yes. I want to see the yes. answer yes. I want to yes. see it up close and personal. All right. Hell yes. Oh, yes. Big ass yes, I think it's the. Here we go. So um, now we will ask to uh, James if you could turn the PowerPoint yep. off and the, uh, and the light. So All right. we need it really dark. So what I have here, it's, it's hard to see, especially since the it's his train light kit. is off, right? There's a standard laser pointer on there, which you can buy for 10 or 20 bucks somewhere. The only thing that this laser pointer has is a switch so that I can keep it on without pressing it with my finger, right? I need a little sheet of paper. OK. Um, so can you hold it like yes. this? No, no, oh. just, just take it in your hand. Uh, can you hold it with both hands? Both hands yes. And so that the audience can see it? <laughs> right, so the laser pointer is here. There is a 50% mirror here that lets half the light pass and half the light goes this way. And then there are two mirrors here. I put them on little stages that, with screws that allow me to maneuver them around. And then the two beams go back and recombine here and come out there. And that's what we're going to project at the screen. It's going to be less impressive than you think because my, laser, <laughs> because my laser pointer isn't really strong. So what you'll see when we turn this on is two red dots. These are the two beams before we combine them. All right. We'll matter annihilating matter. Yeah, and Ready? now we need it really dark in here. Then it's easier to see. OK, okay. darken it up. Here we go. That's dark enough, right. And so let's turn it on, and you see the two spots here. I can oh. move them apart a can little you, further. Can you see them, everybody? Yeah. Can you see them? Cool. All right. And so with those screws, I can make them overlap. And then we can all guess, do they combine to a brighter spot or a darker spot, right? So brighter and what you see, if you look very closely, can you guys see that? it yeah. forms stripes, right? Stripes. So there's some yeah. dark stripes here yeah. and some bright stripes. And so it seems that sometimes the beams combine to make a brighter spot, and sometimes they combine to make a darker spot. Let's see if I can overlap them really well. Stripes oh. get larger. Wow. And now it becomes really sensitive. So if I touch it with my finger, you see they move. Because the light wavelength is really, really short, a thousand times smaller than the thickness of a hair or something. So if I wiggle this very little, the stripes start wiggling. Let me try overlapping them even better. This is about one ten thousandth of 
seven uh, of an atom? So? Uh, of a hair, of a of hair. hair, yeah. Um, now it gets really sensitive. Let me try it's to like annihilate or the light everywhere. Just look at this peephole. <laughs> now you see one bright spot, and if I bend the board a little bit, uh, I need to align it better. Here. If I bend it a little, it gets all bright, and if I bend it mm -hmm. a little more, it gets dark. So there's now two light beams, these two. And if I overlap them, they can make less light here. It's not that good. So <coughs> what happened with detecting gravity waves is yes, explain. that the gravity wave, the gravity pulls on the mirrors, and when the gravity wave comes through, it wiggles the mirror a little bit. And what is an example of a gravity wave coming through, like a one that is easily measur measurable? Um, there is none that's easily measurable. <laughs> yes. But there was one, there were two black holes, each one the mass of 30 suns, and they smashed together, and that caused these gravity waves. So the, all of a sudden, these two black holes were combined, and so the gravity changes really fast, and that's the wave that gets emitted, right? This was pulling on those mirrors, and they picked this up with two of these interferometers, only they were much larger than my little one here. They were four kilometers long, each one. One in Florida and one up, um, where was it? You Louisiana, that. right? Louisiana? Yeah, Louisiana has one. And then I don't know where the other one is. Where are those? Sorry, I'm, I'm totally blanking. Whatever, okay. far so, away so from it's each four other. <laughs> Arizona? Arizona, yeah. Okay, and so, so it's four kilometers long of this laser in a, yeah. con in a concrete In a tube, tube, very long tube, right. And wh why does it have to be four kilometers long? The longer you make them, the more sensitive they get, right? That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure, right. Watch out, Arizona. Get your mind out of the gutter, <laughs> <laughs> out of the laser gutter. ASU, here I come. Sorry, sorry, I just got attacked. Anyway. <laughs> so, and, and, um, so I'm not when, going anywhere. When did LIGO, when did it start? They started in the 70s to set up based on ideas that some people had in the 60s, right? And 40 years later or so, it worked. And um, so 40 years later, so this was how many years ago did we detect gravitational waves? About two years, and the announcement came out last year. So they spent about one year going over this event over and over to make sure it was not fake. Because they didn't want yes. the, there were two disasters in physics where people published before they really knew what was going on. And lots of people got infamous for that. LIGO didn't want it to be on the safe side, so they kept their cl cards close to their chest. And LIGO also has a two four kilometer, so, yeah. so it makes it, you're, you're proving it twice, and that's what is also verifiable in your science. So you gotta make them equally long, because that way you get less sensitive to the imperfections of your laser, that means no laser is really perfect, right? And if you make the two arms equally long, that doesn't matter so much. This is getting too much into detail. All right. <laughs> Give it up for his Sorry laser that. contraption, huh? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> All right, we could turn the slideshow back on. Yeah. I think I need that in my house. Yeah, I should get, yeah, exactly. You, like by the bed stand? You I know, think so, the just, you know, <laughs> just to hang shoot out some lasers at people, uh -huh. yeah, randomly. There it is, he's excited. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Give it up for Holger Mueller, everybody. Thank you, Holger. Yes, and give it up Corinda, for our Joey. wonderful communities, Joey and Corinda, huh? For them. And for all of you for Thank coming you out.